Module 5, Unit 4, Reliability, Validity, and Trustworthiness. And why look at this topic? As Janice Morse reminds us, without re rigor, research is worthless, becomes fiction, and loses its utility. And I think utility is of utmost importance, especially in our field of public health, where um, we try to apply most of our findings to real-world settings. At the end of the lecture, I intend for you to be able to define trustworthiness, um, to explain the epistemological debate about reliability and validity between qual and quant scholars, and to name two concepts within trustworthiness and two examples of activities that can be conducted to ensure trustworthiness. Before we jump into trustworthiness, um, I would like to provide context that there have been decades of debate and most likely will be more moving forward in the future about terms and strategies used to enhance rigor or trustworthiness in qualitative methods. Um, as a reminder, the terms validity, reliability and validity versus trustworthiness. Um, reliability would be if it's um, 30 degrees and you measure, you use the same uh, thermometer and you're measuring multiple times, it should say 30 degrees every single time that you measure, and that would be a highly reliable um, instrument. And then um, if you're measuring and it shows 30 degrees every time, but actually the temperature is 60 degrees, that would be a valid instrument. It would still be reliable, but it would not be valid because it's not measuring what it's intended to measure. There's a lot of debate about whether those terms can be applied to qualitative research, um, and it really comes down to um, what do you consider to be um, real or um, knowledge? What do you consider is um, now, journal, consensual, corroboratory, is it a singular and tangible thing that you can measure, um, which is often what quantitative um, and positivist paradigms go for, or um, is reality uh, multiple and socially constructed? So if you're looking at a phenomenon like uh, what are the experiences of uh, rural communities as they um, deal with higher food insecurity and being able to access fresh fruits and vegetables. What are those experiences of, of that? Um, is that something that's single, singular and tangible, or is that multiple different ways of, of experiencing that um, and, and not socially constructed? So just some of the questions to consider. Um, and back to what's in a name. Janice Morse argues that we can use these terms liability and validity because all research um, should it because the focus is on credible findings or explanations. And if we create alternative terms like trustworthiness, parallel terminology marginalizes inquiry from mainstream science. So it just becomes you're, you're not talking apples to apples. Um, so the one um, camp or one uh, argument, there are many, many different ones. I haven't really um, done much justice to what the debate is, but just wanted to provide, um, as I go into trustworthiness, just wanted to provide some context there. So the term was um, coined by Uba and Lincoln, and there are four main concepts, which I will talk about each one next. And the goal of, of um, all of this work is to address the concepts early, um, rather than after you've done the study to look back. You want to you want to build them really into your study design so that um, you can promote the quote unquote self correcting nature of the strategies, um, so that you're going into it thinking about all of this. The for credibility and the parallel concept in quantitative research would be internal validity. Again, um, with the thermometer, did the Research measure what it was intended to measure. Is it measuring the correct temperature? Um, for credibility, you might ask, is the phenomenon accurate and rich, accurately and richly described? And is there harmony between the methods and the researcher interpretations? Um, some activities that you might conduct um, would be source and analyst triangulation, and I'll talk about that later on um, in the slides. Met checks where you might um, at any point through data collection, through analyses, and 
and um, as you're presenting, member checks would be when you would um, consult the participants of study um, to see if what you what the data look like, what the preliminary analysis is starting to take form, does that actually um, accurately describe what the participants would uh, say is accurate? And external critique as well. I'll talk about those in a few more slides. The next is confirmability, and the parallel concept is reliability, objectivity, um, refers to unbiased data and findings. Do they match the findings? Are there any claims or interpretations made that cannot be supported? So are you kind of going outside or overstretching the data, perhaps? Is, is the evidence rooted in participants' constructions of the phenomenon? And so you could also do uh, member checks for this as well. You'll notice those a lot of overlap. Um, with the activities and the concepts. Um, another activity might be reflexivity, so um, considering confronting biases in advance, and I'll talk about this next, using coders so that um, it's, uh, the bias can be uncovered through different, different lenses, different people's perspectives, and audit trails, so keeping detailed notes of your um, all of the study activities, um, analysts, analytic decisions that you're making, everything. And um, coding software can be a good tool to, um, for example, using things like memos as you go along um, and keeping track of all of these decisions and analytic steps that you're taking. Um, I just wanted to slide about researcher credibility um, because with uh, qualitative research, the researcher's instrument is a very important concept an important indicator of credibility. Um, scrutineers' trust in the researcher is of equal importance to the adequacy procedures themselves. Um, so as we talked about, is the data um, stretching or are you coloring or biasing the data in any way? Um, and it's important because uh, there is inherent bias. Every researcher with your training, your access and relationship to the site, prior knowledge, um, background characteristics are all going to um, affect the way that you are approaching the study and the, and the data and analyses. So making those as transparent as possible, incorporating some of these activities to ensure that um, there's good harmony between what data show and your interpretations is an important step. Transferred concept and the parallel concept is generalizability or external validity um, refers to applying to a broader population. Um, so you'll um, recall in quantitative research, you often do power calculations to ensure that your sample is going to be representative of the larger population that you're looking at. Qualitative studies tend to, not always, but tend to have smaller sample sizes and tend to sample more for information rich cases. Those participants who are going to be able to speak to phenomenon of interest. Um, and so for this, we need to be aware of, describe the scope of the study so that its applicability to different contexts, whether those are broad or narrow, can be readily discerned. Activity to do this is to provide thick descriptions, so detailed accounts of what that context, broad or narrow, actually is, detailed accounts of participants and design, um, to be able to say, because it's not that we don't want to generalize our findings, otherwise it would only be applicable to that one very small sample. We certainly do, um, but we want to be able to understand to what context um, does this, these findings apply. Dependability, um, the parallel concept is reliability, um, again, being able to replicate the exact findings of the study. Um, this is also much debate and a challenging one because uh, with qual we always look at the context and we know that that's often evolving um, the way we in that in naturalistic and interpretive paradigms. Um, dependability then looks at the transparency and the description of methods and procedures so that others could conduct a similar study. Um, what the expectation will be the exact findings like in quant uh, is I think debatable, and again, having query or audit trail helps to helps other researchers to be able to um, conduct a similar study. 
And quote reflecting this, um, I think you'll note that if you've used before, often research participants change their stories. It's not that they're lying. Um, it's that they have new experiences. And, and sometimes the very act of telling a story itself or talking about that experience, they've never been asked these questions before. Um, and so it, it allows them to see the nature and connection of the events very differently. Um, uh, what is often referred to as socially constructed. Sometimes you're constructing that knowledge um, as you go through different experiences, as you talk about it, as you converse with the interviewer. Sometimes your the way the question is asked allows you to um, respond differently. And so, um, as Sandalowski, Sandalowski um, states here, the idea of empirically validating the information from one story to another for consistency completely alien. Um, so. So perhaps the expectation is not that they will be exactly the same um, is presented here. And just a few activities that I've referenced. Um, I wanted to go into a bit more detail. So triangulation, using different sources, methods, and analysts to compensate for individual limitations and exploit their respective benefits. Different kinds that uh, Patton talks about, methods, triangulation, using different methods to look at the same phenomenon from different angles. Data source triangulation, you could um, sit in a classroom and do observational, collect observational data, and then do interviews with teachers and students. Um, triangulation, we, I talked about using multiple coders um, to, to make transparent and expose and talk about biases and theory triangulation. Analysis uh, refers to um, when you're working on hypotheses or a different set of themes and, and you come across outliers or other data, it's um, going back to the data to ensure that what you're seeing is um, explainable, to look at if any alternative explanations, really doing an exhaustive search um, of your data. Debriefings and peer scrutiny. Um, uh, I highly recommend frequent, frequent debriefings throughout both your coding and analyses, which coding is analyses, but um, talking to external members, project directors, expert panel member, checking with participants, anyone you can, um, just to talk about the data. They often ask questions that can lead you down different ways of um, inquiry. They ask questions that might expose the way you're looking at something from too strong of an angle or not. Um, and so peer scrutiny really allows for fresh perspectives. Here are references, additional readings um, that might uh, help. And as I mentioned, I really only did a quick, a very quick um, edition of the debate and all the different ways that these um, concepts can be approached. So I hope you have a look. <laughs>